Okay, two bolts on the points cover. These again are just small quarter inch and uh, they're normally not very tight at all. And uh, shouldn't ever be stuck because you shouldn't ever really get water get under here anyway. It'd be pretty difficult for water to get under this little cover. Just going to remove all this now, just so the actual points and everything are in a safe, safe place, safely in a box, so we can't damage them. We can't cause any damage to the coil, because these are quite expensive to replace. Hopefully this one's going to be okay. I haven't actually tested it, but they're normally pretty bulletproof. And uh, later on when we're rebuilding this engine, we'll show you how to uh, set the points up and everything. And uh, how to set the distance between the coil and the flywheel, so that's correct as well. Right, well now that we're in here, we've just got two more quarter inch small bolts. One holds the condenser, and the other holds the upper section of the points. when that's off. Got a little spring there on your point. That just needs to go around the little peg and that just helps to shut the points when the cam spins around. I reckon this engine probably would have sparked still. The points don't look too corroded. But we'll show you cleaning those as well when the engine's ready to be reassembled. Condenser. Condenser might want replacing, but it looks fairly, looks like it's the engine's original actually, so that'll probably want replacing. We've got some oil up here, probably more than likely because the, more than likely because the um, engine's been tipped up and oil has just seeped out this top crankshaft seal. Okay, unfortunately the battery died whilst I was um, showing you how to remove the condenser, which is a bit of a bugger, but Oh well. Uh, the condenser just has these two small wires on it from the coil and also the stop wire that is on the throttle mechanism and uh, all that has on it is a small spring that you have to prise back. It's quite difficult to do and uh, that has to be prised back so you can actually uh, remove the condenser. It's a bit of a job but now that we've got the condenser off we can actually pull this wire through which means we can now take this air vane governor off. That's how the engine is governed, just as the flywheel is turning on the engine whilst it's running. The air that is generated there pushes this and shuts off the throttle is basically what it does. That's just held on with one bolt, that one. That one takes the longer of the two bolts and that bolt is 5 sixteenths. The other bolt on the other side is just again another small quarter inch bolt. Okay, we need to be a bit careful here with this wire. It threads all the way under the cowling here on the engine. That's it, she's through. Yeah, I think that coil will be okay. We're, uh, we'll test it in a minute, just to make sure that it's giving a reading on the multimeter. But yeah, she's not looking too bad. Not too much grass in the fins. I don't think she was used a great deal. And uh, if she was, she's definitely been thoroughly serviced at least once in its lifetime. Yeah, it's not looking too bad under there. All right. Now most of the external bits are actually off. All we've got left that we can take off now. Uh, there's not much point of really taking off the intake tube. There's no way we can break that at the moment. Yeah, not too bad. So, I guess we can uh, take the cylinder head off. So it should be uh, half inch. Okay, let's try and take off the 
cylinder head. These should be half inch bolts, which they are. Got to be a wee little bit careful because these can sometimes break. I'm going to try and go in the most crisscross pattern as you can just to spread the load on the head evenly. That one was a wee little bit tighter than the other one. That's free. up here. Now that was the worst one, that bottom one. That bottom one and the middle ones are often the ones that break on these engines. So, so far so good. Just taking it so steady. Okay, once these three top head bolts here are undone, we just pull those three out now. The actual throttle assembly here can be removed. That's got the kill switch wire on it which just threads through the same place where your ignition, where the wire from the coil goes to the points. But yeah, okay, we've just got one more bolt to take off. And the cylinder head will be free. Okay, Let's see what we got. Yep, pretty good amount of carbon on the cylinder head. If you're careful enough, you should be able to take your head gasket off completely intact. That should be absolutely fine to reuse. You don't have to use any gasket sealant on that. As long as it's not pried away in any of the corners around the bolts here, that should be fine to reuse. Oh, doesn't look too bad. Okay, well, before we could proceed any further, we need to take the blade bolt off. On this particular engine, the blade bolt is 5 eighths, but uh, that could vary no matter what engine, so just to fit a socket or a spanner on there that fits and will do the job. And uh, yeah, this particular one comes off anti clockwise like any. Oh, sometimes they're reverse rotation, sometimes they're not. And uh, this one, thankfully, actually uh, wasn't tight at all, so that's not a problem. You want to wedge the blade as well, so when you're tapping it, the engine isn't trying to turn. But yeah, so far, no problems. It's a 9 16 that holds the actual engine down on this particular mower. Again, that could be completely different depending on what mower you've got. Fortunately enough, these seem to be coming off nice and easy. Okay, we just removed the actual um, coupling here for the blade. It's obviously on the end of the crankshaft here. And uh, yeah, that's pretty hard to get that off. I used a um, No, there it is. I used the small gear and pulley puller to pull that off. A little bit awkward because it's a square or rectangle shape. So uh, yeah, that was a little bit difficult. But it's revealed a nice little stubby, really thick crankshaft. So there's no way on earth that could be bent. So uh, we shouldn't have a bent crankshaft from whatever it's hit. More likely to have a bent twisted blade probably than anything else. So I'm quite happy to see that. That should mean that we don't have any problems with the crank. That should be okay. Okay, on the engine just over here we have a small Allen key bolt here, which is the sump plug for the engine. So uh, we're going to try and remove that now. It seems to be coming out okay after a few taps with the hammer. Just to get it loose. Want to be careful with that. Don't want to lose that, definitely. And that's the engine sump plug, so now we should be able to drain whatever's left of the oil out nice and easily.